Hello, I'm Martin Omander, a developer advocate on the serverless team. And I'm Craig LeBenz, a developer relations engineer on the Cloud SQL team. Oh, Cloud SQL, you say? That's perfect, because I'm looking to deploy my app on Cloud Run, but its backend uses a relational database, and I'm not sure how to combine the two. Ah, yes. Many developers are using serverless architectures with relational databases. Why don't you show me what you're building and we can take it from there? Sounds good. All right, Craig, I've decided to settle one of the greatest programming head scratchers of all time. Ah, GIF versus GIF? Uh, no, not that one. Uh, what color is the dress? No, Craig, I said programming. I created a web app to poll whether developers prefer tabs or spaces in their code. Oh, I love that idea because the answer will obviously be now, your app is definitely going to get millions of daily active users from day one, so you'll need to be thoughtful with its infrastructure. Can you show me what you have? Yep, my app's code is ready to go. Uh, there's a simple front end that displays the most recent votes uh, plus the totals. Also, there's a form at the bottom that collects new votes. Okay, that sounds like a pretty standard web app. Now, you mentioned using SQL for its backend. What went into that decision? Well, I plan to have several Cloud Run services that periodically run analysis on my data. And SQL is really good at aggregations, like sums and averages. Hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. It sounds like Cloud SQL is actually the right choice for your app. Oh, that's good to hear. Uh, but my fear using SQL with a serverless architecture is that Postgres and MySQL databases, that they don't scale up automatically like Cloud Functions or Cloud Run. Oh, we've all been there. Now, luckily, traditional SQL databases have a lot of tricks you can use to squeeze every last drop of performance out of your hardware. What do you say we deploy your app and then we'll run some load tests? Sounds good. Let's get this baby shipped. All right, so I'm ready to create my uh, database instance here uh, in Cloud SQL. I click Create Instance. And ah, the first thing, it asks me for database engine. Uh, do you have any recommendation? Well, all three provide a modern SQL database, but the community seems to be agreeing on Postgres-style SQL for new products. So looking ahead, choosing Postgres will set you up nicely for upgrades in the future. But of course, every decision that we make here will be the same for MySQL or SQL Server. All right, so uh, I'll call my instance poll database. There we go. And I'll enter super secret password here. Let's see, secret password, all right. Um, now, regarding location, uh, I'm in California, so I'm physically closest to, let's see, ah, US West. Um, but to make sure I have the same experience as users far, far from California, I think I'll deploy my app to uh, maybe Europe North. Oh, that's so clever. By not deploying your app, to the nearest region, you'll be able to see if users far from your servers have degraded experiences. Yeah, uh, and of course, if I know that all my users are in one place, I would deploy my app to that region. Uh, but I have a question, Craig. Uh, I put this in Finland now, but can I then relocate my Cloud SQL instance later on? Oh yes, of course. Moving your database location is as easy as creating a read replica in your new region, waiting for it to catch up to your main database, and then promoting it. All right, cool. Next one is database version. I'll pick the latest available. Uh, configuration options, it says there. Uh, oh, there is a lot here. <laughs> yeah, there is. Luckily, uh, they're not too bad. The first item, connectivity, offers a lot of different ways of establishing a secure connection to your database. The private IP option allows you to connect to a virtual private cloud, but I don't recommend that for newer apps. Okay, yeah, I want to start simple, but in a way that doesn't prevent me from growing in the future. For sure, and you can always add a virtual private cloud down the line should you desire. So this means the default connectivity option should be exactly what you want because Cloud Run is designed to connect to Cloud SQL right out of the box. Ah, I love it when things work right out of the box. 
Okay, so closing connectivity, uh, I'm opening machine type and storage. What should I pick here? Now here, I usually start with the smallest machine that qualifies for Google service level agreement, which is one virtual CPU and 3.75 gigabytes of RAM. Now, estimating hardware needs ahead of time is extremely difficult for any app, especially one not yet launched, which is why we're gonna run some load tests. <laughs> cool. Uh, so I pick one virtual CPU, 3.75 gigabytes of RAM here. But what if I find out that I chose the wrong size later on? What then? Well, if your app can tolerate a few minutes of downtime, more database power is never further away than turning off your instance, resizing it, and turning it back on. Of course, if your app cannot tolerate a few minutes of downtime, then the standard workflow is the same as changing regions. You create a larger read replica, wait until it catches up to production, and then promote it. Now next, as for storage type and encryption, I strongly recommend solid state drives and Google managed encryption. Those are easy wins and they reduce your headaches. Okay, uh, let's see. So it looks like next is backups. Ah, great, looks like backups are on by default. And closing backups. Uh, then we have uh, flags, maintenance, query insights and labels. Ah, that sounds like extra credit. So I think we might be good to go. I'm clicking create. You've taken your first step into a larger world. But say, we've got a few minutes while this database instance gets created. Top off coffee? Uh, well, tea for me, but yeah, that sounds great. All right, I've refilled my tea and my database is created. Uh, before we go any further, I'll use Cloud Shell uh, to create all of my tables. So if I scroll down here, I can click Connect using Cloud Shell. All right, so I'm in and uh, I'm going to paste in the statements to create the tables. Uh, there it is. All right, so now my next uh, question is, what values should I use in my code to connect to my Cloud SQL instance? Well, usually you would use your database's IP address, but Cloud Run creates a Unix socket in your running container for each connected Cloud SQL instance. This means all that your application code has to do is point to that socket file. I sent you a working code sample earlier. Did you get it? Uh, Socket.txt. Yeah, right. This is the one you sent me, right? Yes. So with that, you can uh, copy that okay. and go back into main.py. Yeah and you can remove the host and port arguments and instead supply that copied code as the path to your Unix socket file. Uh -huh. And like all of your other database connection values, it's best to read that path from an environment variable. Now in Cloud Run, the path is always slash Cloud SQL slash your database connection name, which you can find on your Cloud SQL instance screen. All right, so I have... Uh... Let's see, I have an environmental uh, environment file here. I took out host and port. Uh, so, uh, and in my database, ah, right, there's the connection name. Cool, I'll just copy that. So that's the connection. Yeah, so you can put all the values in this file. And for the database user, we use the default Postgres user of Postgres. Postgres, got it. And I'm sure you remember your best in class password. Ah, yes, uncrackable. And, and we also use the default Postgres database. Oh, Very nice. Okay, Postgres. There we are. All right, so I placed a database username and password database name and connection name. Now it looks like we're ready to deploy your app. Uh, so I have a script prepared that handles the entire uh, deployment process. Well, that sounds amazing. Can I see it? Uh, I'll just start it real quick here. So what this does is uh, up here, it sets uh, three environment variables that will be used further down. And then it's two steps. So the first one is gcloud builds submit, which just packages everything up uh, in this directory and sends it to cloud build, uh, a Google build server that builds the container. That's what's going on right now. And then down here is gcloud run deploy, which takes that container and deploys it as a new cloud run service. Also, it includes here 
add SQL instances flag that sends along the connection name so that Cloud Run knows uh, which database to connect to. Wow, and to think, now you can deploy your entire app with just a few key presses. This is really gonna lend itself to a nice CI CD pipeline. Hey, it looks like the deploy was a success. Uh, let's see if it loads. I'll go to this URL here. It looks like I've connected Cloud Run, which is serverless, with a traditional SQL database running on dedicated hardware. I can scale it up by adding CPU, memory, or read replicas. But will I need to do that? How much traffic can my system handle, Craig? Well, all apps are different. The only way to know is to run a load test. Sounds great. Stay tuned for the next video where we do that.